Hello, this is Simon O'Sullivan, North Peak Writer Extraordinaire, and you're listening to the NBA Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 112. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Where your stupid lion don't go the right way? Oh, hello, everybody. Hi. Hey, Norman. How are you doing? Hey, James. Who was passing by? No, no lion. No, 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 nobody passing by. It's just my stupid, this goddamn comic that never wants to be finished. And like page 20 of the comic, and we, are, we only establish the characters. You know how... <laughs> No, this is good for me, more job, more money, but oh my god, this comic is lasting forever. Now you know how the people at DC feel. <laughs> <laughs> Strange why I went to DC. But anywho, other than that, how are you, man? How are you? No, I'm good, I'm good. Far from complaining, I had a very good day yesterday. It took a while away from the computer to remember what is having a social life like. Uh, go, go, got myself some sushi, got myself some Magic the Gathering cards ah. for a comic... I spend the entire day out, and um, today I'm staying in because of ponies, this podcast, the live stream, and because there is a, a comic con in my city that I don't like, <laughs> because they try, they try to sell it to you, like it's actually something international about all types of comic and, and artistic expression, but then it's only about manga, anime, and all that. And oh, really, no. I, I like manga and anime all right, but when they try to sell you as something else, it's just deceiving and I'm not very honest, and I don't like it. Mm, okay, understandable, understandable. Uh, talking about having a social life, I went out today. I bought some um, starter packs or intro pack for Magic the Gathering, and also card sleeves. I, I think I showed you before the recording, so yay. Yeah, you did show me that you got some vinyl scratch ones. Mm-hmm. What the hell? We're still in my country, we still have the, 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 the ones that are just like blanks. They're like just yellow, just blue, just green, just white, and you already have the vinyl scratch ones. What oh, the hell? I got no idea, man. Stupid international sh- trade laws. Ah. <laughs> I'm pretty shocked that I got them. No, but anyway, yeah, we have a guess. We have a guess. Don't we, James? We'll steal them from, I will steal them from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do have a guest, actually. Uh, a guest that this one is a very special guest, special, uh, close to my heart. This is one of my oldest friends. Uh, we met, uh, like what seven eight years ago and i i'm not going to say how he was in the fandom but i had something to do with it <laughs> Here we have today with us uh simon o sullivan hey simon hi james hi norman pleasure being here with you both hey simon how are you doing man well quite fine actually i have been writing a bit this afternoon after going Running some errands, and now I'm here with you, ready for whatever you throw at me. <laughs> I think I should have checked before I say that. No matter. I hope you're ready to dodge knives. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, I can try. Uh, well, we won't throw any weapons at you, Pedro. But I'm making no promises. With the main confusion. This is going to be promising. Yay! But anywho, uh, <laughs> Simon, before we start, we need yes. to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who's your favorite character? Discord. <laughs> really now? Simple as that. As you see, it, you know, he didn't even hesitate. Yeah, because it it was a it, it progressed through the first episode because I was like I started watching the show and it was like okay, uh, Twilight Sparkle is a very cute character, and then I started seeing how Spike was a bit sarcastic little guy, and I was like, okay, I like this character even more. <laughs> And okay. then she goes to, to Ponyville to organize the party, and then we meet Applejack, and oh my god, Applejack is so cute and so southern and so awesome. And then she introduces everyone in the family, and I see Big Macintosh, and I'm, I love that guy. And then the season two premiere starts, and I see Discord, the spirit of chaos and disharmony. And he was like, I love this guy with all my heart, I won't change that thing ever. <laughs> uh, and it's been like that since then. Oh, okay. Well, that that was an interesting uh, jump from character to character. I, I would never guess that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, favorite episode? Curiously, it's not a Discord episode. <laughs> so, the, so, I must admit that uh, the one when Discord sings is amazing. Oh, yes, it's that's It's only nice. for the song. But oh, that's yet. There is a Crowd. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I'm afraid I don't know much of the, of the names of the characters. Don't worry, yeah, that's uh, what I'm here for. Excellent. But my favorite episode is has to go for Secret of My Access. 
Oh, really? A secret of having sex? Mm-hmm. We should need that. I, I kind of <laughs> forget. That's, epi- that's episode 10 of season 2 is the episode where Spike grows big mm. and greedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mostly because I love the lore of the dragons there, as in there is no sort of... They do- it doesn't seem to be any sort of age and... Uh, Related things, so they they grow because they they hoard things, and it's like, oh my god, that's amazing, and the humor there is amazing, especially when he goes to the part where he says, uh, I only get one present every year <laughs> from Twilight, a book, <laughs> and you see how obvious he's a book. Twilight walking down the stairs with a, with what is obvious a book wrapped in paper gift. No, it's not even a paper gift. It's a book with a ribbon on it, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, and she just blushes and walks upstairs, like pretending it didn't happen. I really <laughs> love. Uh, that's just so cute. I that that yeah, that moment was so cute. And the whole episode is amazing. And I am not that much a person who loves shipping, but there's part in that part was amazing and I really love that part mm. okay well Rare Ship is uh, legit I've seen some good uh, fix about it but uh, moving on um, how, sorry, how did you become a fan of the show okay you can blame Jane for that, uh, that, 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 that I know nothing I don't make myself <laughs> responsible okay uh, when I know. Uh, when I start, when I moved back to my hometown, because I was studying there in Granada, and that's where I met I met James back in college. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was here doing nothing in summer. I think it was in mid July of 2012, maybe. No, you were, no, you were, no, you were. It was. Uh, no, it was earlier than that. It was actually 2011, dude. Oh, really? All oh, right. I think it's the, the the second season has started already. Maybe the four or five chapter episodes of the second season has started already. Yeah, that's definitely 2011. Mm. All right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely 2011 because okay. I keep on telling the story. I will um. So I will what? quantify. Okay, just for not trying to find the accuracy, but I, that was the idea. I was just bored in my house, doing absolutely nothing in summer because none of my friends are in my hometown. And he's like, dude, I have found this amazing show. You have to give it a chance. And I'm like, okay, I met you for a long, and you have quite a good taste for those. What? <laughs> What's about it? This is my little pony princess is magic. <laughs> I must admit that I was quite hesitant about the idea. <laughs> quite. You were like, are you... That's f- not a word. Kidding me. <laughs> okay. That's just pretty simple, Okay. <laughs> And I say, okay, I'm not going to judge, I'm going to give it a chance. And uh, I started watching the show, and I started lurking for more as as much as I could. I just couldn't get a top of it, and I became a regular now. I don't watch the streams anymore because I have a lot of stuff to do, and I just just wait until they they upload it to catch up. Mostly because we don't have the episodes. We're in Spain, we don't have anything to watch them live here. Oh, well, at least you're catching up and at least you're supporting the show in one way or another. That's good. Also, clarify that your internet is kind of crappy, so even if you try to watch the live streams, it will keep oh. on ca- cutting up. It was because we had this uh, limited, limited bandwidth, so if I wanted to watch, like, if I watched uh, more than two episodes uh, a day, uh, we barely had able. We were barely able to use internet for the rest of the month. Oh my. So it, um, barely. I just had to wait. Like uh, I was, I had to wait to I to a time I could go to visit James in Granada, so we could smuggle the cartoons and just like, yeah, this has. They were like, oh, oh, more pony, and they. <laughs> uh, and, uh, we got the, a better internet, I was able to watch the episodes and keep it daily and all that. Ah, okay, cool, cool. So, um, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Well, I have friends that are like... I have actually a female friend that is like, you watch that? <laughs> and I, most of my friends don't really give a crap about it. My family is that, hey, you've been watching cartoons all your freaking life, <laughs> even though you're 27. So I don't care what cartoons you watch. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. And that's a good yeah. response. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. 
Yeah, it's a very mature response, if you ask me. Yeah. Oh, they know you too well. They know you too well. Yeah, I'm like, I, the, most of the things I watch on TV are cartoons and stuff like that. True, the the pens of the cartoons, okay, you would say, oh, you watch Adventure Time, you watch Metalocalypse, you watch a lot of cartoons of different age ratings, so mm. I don't really fit that, because real life, uh, life action is most of the time a bit boring because you, you have the, the restrictions of the non-cartoons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I still Wolfram Roger Roberts is one of my favorite movies, because oh, yeah. it combines the... Yeah, true, true, I mean... I too don't really watch that much uh, live action drama or shows besides Doctor Who so I'm kind of limited to cartoons or anime and since Killer Kill's gone I'm watching a new show Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusader that's an awesome show you should watch <laughs> oh man I haven't watched uh, obsessively uh, an anime since Slayers and this was one of my favorite animes ever well, Slayer's a wild man, wow. Yeah. Here I am on my side being the guy who watches Hannibal Game of Thrones <laughs> and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but anyway. Like, My Little Pony is literally the only cartoon that I watch nowadays because, I, I to be perfectly honest, I watched a couple of episodes of uh, Wonder Over Yonder and I thought it was very lackluster. Mm. Like, it didn't have much uh, 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 for me in that show. I watched a couple of episodes of Gravity Falls, and I was like, man, this is awesome. Where is the rest? Well, I mean, it, Cartoon Network took it down. Damn Wait, it. Cartoon Network? I thought it was a Disney. Yeah, you know what? That's the that's the thing. It makes no sense. It is Disney. It plays on the Disney Channel. However, when I went to YouTube and watched it again, it said <laughs> this content was taken down by Cartoon Network dot whatever, and I am like, what the hell? <laughs> Wait a minute. How can they claim copyright on something they don't own? Oh my God! YouTube is all kinds of messed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not even going to debate you on that, man. Not even. Yeah, yeah, and Adventure Time is one part of the same. Is like try to watch the episodes taken down, and they they don't really air them at good times when uh, here in my country. Uh, oh, another one, Steven Universe. That's good. I watched a couple of those as well. That's funny. That is a funny show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very innocent, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's Steven. If we have a Steven Universe podcast, that would be so much fun. <laughs> but it's anyway. an absolutely it's an absolutely adorable show. I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. Because the guy is just so wide-eyed innocent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's so and much naive. fun. So much Agreed. fun. But I'm anywho, not saying it's not, but geez. Okay, go on, go on. <laughs> but anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. And James, I think you're going to enjoy this one. Ooh. The Callisti 4 live stream event is happening! Yay! Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Part of it, I'm part of it. Mm. I am. And also, so, it's a sketchy, and a few of my other friends, we have... A lot of uh, artists, we have a lot of people helping. But you know, this is the thing. You all have to read me what it is about because I have no idea <laughs> why we are raising funds this time. All righty then. So anywho, the team over at the Bronies for Good will be holding another Callisti live stream on May 3rd at noon EDT or 4 p.m. UTC. Time zones, I'm so confused. And the event will be streamed on Ponyville Live. Or part of Ponyville Life. The donations are again going to be split 50 50 between Galacon, who supported them with their charity auction, and your siblings. Special guests that will be attending the live streams are Anneli Heath, Cindy Morrow, Jennifer Weisbrecht, oh, German uh, Nicole Oliver, and Tara Strong. And like the previous Kalisti live stream, they will be art. And uh, artist will be the MBS show's very own James Cork. I I, don't, I I cannot say this name. Chucky BB, Death Pone, Derp Time, and many more. Links can be found in the show note. So, yay, Kalisti, this is awesome. I'm very happy that we are doing that. Uh, last time I, I was there, I managed to make five drawings in like six hours, which was a record for me. So I'm going to see if I can break it. Mm-hmm. And please do uh, please do check out the show notes because I've put in the links to every artist there, so you can check out James, Chucky BB, Derp Time, and Sketchy. I'm not if I'm not sure if this is the same Sketchy sound. Not our not our Sketchy. That's yeah. another Sketchy. Puppy Doctor. Anywho, yeah, um, do check it out because this is for a good cause because um, your sibling is a really good charity thing. 
and you should support them. Although our sketchy sketchy Simon from EFN, he is coming to the to the stream. I talked to the organizers. We're trying to get him included as one of the musicians. Ah, that's cool. That's cool. Yes, we uh, we should get the people from Callisti on, but ah, uh, it'll be too late, I guess. Yeah, we are not going to have time. It's literally the next weekend. Yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, well, we need to talk about that later, James, because next weekend I got something to ask. But never mind, after the show, after the show. But, <laughs> James, good luck. I do wish you the best in this, and I hope you get to talk to most of the stars. Well, last time I went to, I, I was in the Calisti, I managed to talk with Amy Keating Rogers. Yay, so much And then fun. I thought, talk- I topped it all off by actually talking to her in this show, so <laughs> the better the merrier. I don't know what to ask to whom. Like, I ask everything that was worth asking for me to uh, to Cindy Morrow, and um, I asked... Uh, I, 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 well, holy cow, I don't know what I will ask Tara Strong. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so jelly that you are talking to those people. So, so jelly. Well, oh, come on. Don't, don't be jelly. Yeah. Oh well, anywho, let's move away from the jelliness and to the next news. It's possible that I will, what I will do, I will just cower on the corner going, Oh my god, I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> oh boys. But anywho, let's move on to the next one. Uh, the next news is second official My Little Pony soundtrack is available on iTunes. Alright. If you haven't heard, the second NLP soundtrack is available for purchase on iTunes. The songs that are featured in the album are from Season 3 to Season 4, and they are three extended versions available. Links can be found in the show notes. Yes, the songs. Yay, I've listened to them, and they're awesome. I haven't got it yet, but that's because I don't have iTunes, because screw Apple, I don't <laughs> like it. I, I, I hate Apple with the same fire passion that I hate Facebook. Um, <laughs> But when they get released on the Google Play Store, I'll definitely get them. Oh, you, you should get them, man, because the songs are in really good high definition. And the three songs that were extended was the birthday song that Pinky sang in Pinky Pride, uh, the uh, the failure, the, um, what song was it where Twilight sang when she done goof with the spell? Um, I have to find a way. Yeah, that one. That was extended also. And the intro, that was extended too. That's awesome. It was really good. It was really nice. Oh man, I, I wish I could play it here now and listen. And yeah, no, not going to happen. But I, I'm really surprised that they didn't pick anything from season one or season two. Well, perhaps because the one that's playing right now is season four, and they just finished season three, so they want to keep it constant and current also, because they already released one of the soundtracks, Mm. and that one had uh, pieces from seasons one and two. Mm. That one had the that that one had a a, a, a rarity song from Sweet and Elite. Uh, It had winter wrap up. It had this day area. I think Mm. it. Yeah, you know what. We should have Sketchy around because he knows about the soundtrack better than any of us. Because <laughs> true, he true. did purchase it. He buy it. he bought it, actually. Oh, that's cool. But anywho, um, it's really good. And I can't wait for the third one because that where else? Uh, Pinky Pride, man. Pinky Pride. There's a lot of songs that I want to listen in Pinky Pride. And speaking of which... Oh, my. Segway! Woohoo! So, um, speaking of Pinky Pride... <laughs> And all those good stuff. Two My Little Pony episodes got nominated for a Leo Award. Yay! Yeah, we have like uh, the, the Leo Awards, for those of you who don't know. They are like the Canadian Emmys. Yay! Canadian Emmys! And My Little Pony was nominated before, actually, and he did one. Uh, oh, the, yeah. f- the, se- the second season had a bad load of nominations, oh, but he yeah. didn't got any. However, season three was nominated, like, I think it was a Sleepless in Ponyville. It was nominated for Best Sound, and uh, uh, A Magical Mystery Cure was nominated for Best Soundtrack and Best Music, and they ended up winning must- for Best Soundtrack and Music for Magical uh. Mystery Cure. Well, uh, talking about um, overall sound and musical score, um, they got nominated for those two again. And um, the nominees are Power Ponies, nominated for overall for best overall sound in an animation program or TV series. 
And Pinky Pride nominated for Best Musical Score in an Animation Program or TV Series. Yeah. And, well, we here at NBS Show wish us the best of luck to My Little Pony. Hope they win. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, let's not forget that Little Pet Shop is also nominated. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, it's for overall sound too. Yeah. So, well, and I think it's overall music actually. Oh, really? Well, well, I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go check it. Go, go check it out. But yeah, I mean, it is wonderful to know that uh, they do keep ranking up nominations one after the other. Like, yeah, okay, they're not the Emmys, but you know what? Uh, in the end. It's the, it's what I like to call the Harry Potter effect. <laughs> uh, the Harry Potter has eight movies in its uh, uh, in its ranks. None of those ever won an Academy Award. None of those have an Oscar, reg- despite them being nominated for Oscar several times. But that doesn't mean the movies are not good. They remain as one of the most relevant, good, well done appreciated and high quality movie franchises of this current generation and that is more valuable than the statue of a, the statue of a golden guy holding a sword against his crotch <laughs> uh, so you know what to be perfectly honest in my opinion awards don't matter what matters is the impact that you leave on the people okay. but it's nice yeah, getting true. nominated to something and winning is very nice true, so true. I hate using the word nice, but there is no other way to put it. Mm-hmm. That's the way, that's the, um, the amount of respect that I give to, uh, to awards. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, and Little Spare Shop got nominated for uh, Best Musical Score. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, and that's cool. That's cool. And let's move on to a little bit of news. And that's the Brony Dog host, uh, Scarlett, shutting down. Really sad. Uh- yeah, uh, the one, the, it was the service that they put up together to uh, release the Brony documentary. Mm. Uh, the one produced by uh, Lauren Faust, Talastron, and John Delancey. Mm-hmm. They are ending the service. In my opinion, I think it's been going for like, what, two years already? Could a year be. and a half? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a good amount of, amount, of, amount of time to have a system up and running. Mm-hmm. And well... If you did bought something from that service, you better download it now before May first because if you haven't, they're gonna shut it down. Yep. I had downloaded mine and I got the DVDs. Sorry, not DVDs, but Blu-ray. I got the Blu-ray and yeah. Um, I, I guess there's Netflix and whatever services out there. So yay. <laughs> but anywho, let's move on to guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Simone. Simone is a fanfic writer on Fimfic, and he writes stuff about the ponies. So, Simon, how are you doing, man? Well, I'm doing fine. I'm enjoying my time here for now. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You haven't been here long enough. <laughs> uh, and what does that imply, James? That implies that next is going to come the nipple clamps and the <laughs> whips and the... And it's going to be really bad, and it's going to be painful. Uh, and, and unless you and unless you're into it, you're gonna you're not gonna like it. Oh God, what? Happened? And that's why I'm still around. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, but anywho, Pedro, how are you doing, man? How are you doing? I hope I hope James is not bullying you too hard. Yeah, I mean I've had words, and we have done some crazy stuff together when we were back at college. Other than that, nah. Oh my. <laughs> Oh, shut up, Norman. Uh, no, you. Let me get the gag. <laughs> but no. Ah! Uh, I, I'm influenced by you. No, bet me. <laughs> oh, bet me. But anyway, um, Pedro, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Hey, I'm sure. Sure. Uh, I go by Samono Solovan, and I, when I started the fandom, I became a, well, so it's hard to say that I became a fanfic writer. And I've been doing that for almost uh, from August 2012. And only recently I started drawing as well. So Uh I am now walking two different forms of art. Mostly, first of all, is writing. And uh, I've tried to write about uh, several different uh, genres. Touching everything to see what what I'm better or worse at. My first work uh, 
was uh, something that I thought it's going to be awesome, but no one is going to read, which <laughs> which was a, a crossover called Ponies of the Five Rings, with Ponies of the Five Rings, sorry, which is a crossover of My Little Pony with the Legend of the Five Rings, a collectible card game slash <laughs> tabletop RPG. Well, I, I do see that it's get, it got 40 likes and uh, 52 comments, so that's not bad. The only yeah, reason why you haven't moved forward is because Pixel Kitties hasn't got in touch with you yet. <laughs> yeah, because for some reason, you know, uh, I've been in this fandom for almost for about three years now. But the, uh, as a writer, you have the problem that you cannot uh, do like, as I'm doing right now, that for example, there is a lot of people I, I admire in the fandom and I wanted to be able to give something back. But draw, writing fanfics is not that easy when it comes to the viewing on getting someone, especially people that were, that are so busy, to take time to read, to write, uh, read something you wrote for them. And now that I am able to draw something, it's a bit easier. And they can basically just glance at the pick at the, at the and say, oh, it's awesome, thank you. So what I wanted to do back today, as, as James said, was that I wanted to add Pixel Kitty's character to Punish of the Five Rings. I actually got her permission and was able to have her read the first scene where she appears. And she loved and I added the character to the to the strip, and he she's part of the plot as well. So it's, it was going to go well. The problem was that it was, I wasn't really able to. I was hoping that I was able to send her scenes every time, so she could just give her the thumbs up. Because even though I wanted to, I got her permission to use her character, even though I changed her name and all that, because it doesn't feel right in the. Uh, you know, the, doesn't sound very pony like the name. Because, but even though we all use, our, we all love her, but the name doesn't sound that pony like. So oh, it's it so Yes. Oh. Well, taking into account that the place that the stories take, uh, the, you know, the time period that it takes place in is like feudal Japan. There isn't yeah. much point of coming up with a pixel. There is no digital anything, so it does make sense to change her name. Yeah, so her name there was Inkbrush. And she, her character was based in Broken Sword, a character from the movie Hero. So the character, she was basically a calligraphist that had learned to fight a sword because of the calligraphy. So uh, when I started the seventh chapter, I waited for... Pixel Kitties to get uh, to get her feedback because I I know she gets the permission but I didn't want to have her character do something she wasn't comfortable with mm. and uh, I wasn't able to get to her and that combined to the fact that my computer my laptop died and part of chap almost the rest of chapter seven just disappeared forever Aww. it was a bit discouraging so I put the story aside and I started working on other you know on other short stories mostly and I'm bad at short stories because I need to feel the need to read everything the long stories and have the idea of the world actually moves around the characters to what even while they're not there and that's why uh, the lover said that the second story the second long story and the first one I actually finished is one of my personal favorites. Or aside from all the different things, I love the story for. Hmm, okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm guessing Pixel Kid is a bit busy because she is a busy lady. She is. Well, remember that she works for Wheel of Fine. She designs other stuff aside from, you know, MLP-related brands. Like, she did do a couple of Avengers t-shirts for Wheel of Fine. And she's doing all the print. She did all the autograph prints for Babscon. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the the pictures that uh, uh, you buy from a, uh, from a table to get autographed by... Uh, mm -hmm. by by the people that work on the show, she drew all of those, uh, and she had like how many thirty? That was a bad load of pictures, and that's a lot of work to do. So of course, she's yes, going to be, she's a busy it. she's a busy bee. Mm -hmm. I don't think her, and I don't really mind because I was able to start working on other things that actually caught more attention. Because Legend of the Five Rings is a world that so, few people know of, and 
finding people who like Legend of the Five Rings and My Little Pony is a bit weird. And let's, then you have let's, other... let's, let's just say it's a very niche market, what you have there. Yeah, and then we had people saying like, wait, you made a fanfic about a card game? <laughs> and like, dude, like, dude, there are hundreds of Yu-Gi-Oh comics and you're not complaining about those. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, that is true. Uh, but anyway, um, Simon, uh, I see here that you have uh, a few fics that are incomplete and uh, currently, com- uh, half of them are complete, and you know th- you have a various amount of complete and incomplete. So, uh, I do notice one here in my favorite is Twilight's Perfect Date. What's the inspiration for that one? That has a crazy story behind it because <laughs> you remember that there was a there is. I don't know if it was cancelled. I'm afraid that I focus on my own work and maybe checking that my Tumblr to see all the new awesome drawings. So I don't get that much about all the news about that. But there was a, some sort of dating scene game called uh, uh, Star Wars Academy. And I actually tried to get uh, the role of being the writer of Twilight, uh, Sparkle, in that game. Mm-hmm. And All is Perfect Date was basically my entry to try and get uh, the story there. Oh, so um, um, did you got it in? Yes. Yeah. I actually didn't get the role. Aww. But I just uploaded it to see that it, it was a silly story, actually. And the only thing that I got out of that was that there was a guy out there that was like, dude, it's such a coincidence that my character, my, my, my pony son is named right after the character that I is dating there. But other than that, yeah, it was a bit silly. I usually don't, when, when it comes to shipping, that's something I have to say. When it comes to shipping, I don't have almost nothing set in stone. Hmm. Say for the, the pairs that are in ca- are canon in the show, like the parents of Suitable's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Cake, uh, Shining Armor and Cadence, and a few other of that, <laughs> I don't really have. Anything that you say, this and this are OTP. <laughs> Can I rustle some Jimmy's, Norman? Okay, go ahead. Twilight and Flash Sentry. I can hear all the fans going, Ooh! So, James, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on the bunker because I'm hiding from your Normans now. <laughs> Uh, stay after the show. Stay near to the end of the show, guys, to find out where you can find James. Uh, <laughs> but um, Simon, overall, how do you? What's your inspiration for writing? Because I see here you write a lot. Well, it, I am actually a very slow when it, writer. I've uh, seen sometimes I just write nothing for weeks. And then one day, inspiration comes, and I write half a story, half a chapter. Oh uh, I usually focus on writing stuff I actually like, and that's why there they are so different genres. There's one of my crazy events was uh, one of the things you're seeing there, mostly that it's uh, Stallion Comics, Spikes, and the Power of Awesome Manliness. Yes. Which is basically a story inspired by Sim Baby's Man Comics on <laughs> Crack.com, and especially Punch Master and all those Manly Comics. And I really have to continue that one, but it's really hard to be drunk and inspired at the same time to write that. <laughs> Needless to say, I wrote, I read that one. It's power ponies with cojones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. oh my! There is no yeah. other way to put it. Yeah, it's amazing. And then there was another story which was uh, like, uh, I want to write something, but silly. And that's where Head First to Equestria came out. That was extremely horrible to write because it was a joke, a simple joke. I'm going to, I, I don't think anyone is going to read it, so I'm going to spoil the story what it's going to be about. Okay. The story is about a girl that is like that, that has a crush on Sorin mm-hmm. and wants to go to Equestria. He learn, she learns to bake pies and all that so mm. she can seduce Sorin and all that. And she actually wishes upon a falling star to go to Equestria. Mm. And the wish comes true. 
and she goes to Cloudsdale. Oh, God. She's a human. She cannot walk on Cloud. She falls to her death. Uh, wow. Uh, that that <laughs> is... That is dark. <laughs> it's, it's basically, everything is just a setting for the story. And it was annoying because... I felt like this story, this is just stretching it too much and the punchline is not going to be good enough to deliver. But it was, an, 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 it was, it was like, you really hate human in Equestria Peak, don't you? And then like, no, it's just a silly satire and I'm not that good at it, apparently. <laughs> but if I had to say a fake is one of my favorites, the favorite and the fake I love the most working on is The Lover's Edda. Uh-huh. And it's the one I actually dedicate as along with Punish of the Five Rings, is the thing I've dedicated more time to research more than writing. Hmm. And I will talk about something in the in the interview later uh, oh, okay. about some aspects. I think we talked to you about it yesterday, Norman. About uh-huh. what we could talk in the story. Well you know what? Why, just, why why don't you bring it up now? Because um I, I would love to hear it and I bet the audience would love it too. All right. Uh, this is about all sorts, all sorts of art. I'm not complaining about anything. I have, I touched two different uh, ways of, of art: writing and drawing. Mm-hmm. All of them are take are time consuming, and we can only ha- and we only need to be in this stream and seeing James just drawing here to know that every sort of art takes time. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. The, the, the advantage is most of them have is that the viewer just have to sit around and they see it all it with a problem mm-hmm. you know you can see a picture in the moment it's like yeah this for example a painting Velasquez took two years to write this page to draw this painting it's amazing and all that but you only take like 10 seconds to just look at it and maybe even be picking with the details and just go oh and that's all you need Mm-hmm. Or maybe go through the details and say, oh, that neck doesn't look too, too wood. And maybe you should change the perspective on that, on that, on that arm. And oh my god, what did you do with the eyes? Oh my god, you I suck. To, I know that the mo- the only people who talk like that are people who actually don't draw. Yeah. At all. That's the funny thing. The biggest criticism comes from people that have no idea how to do these things. But it, it comes but it's mostly destructive criticism because when yeah. I talk to you, you are an artist, I'm much better than me, and I show you, look what I have done. I saw like a 10 year old, look what I have done, daddy. <laughs> wow, but, man. It's, but it's, you see, the, 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 way I, the way I tell you uh, the things that you do good and the things that you do bad is the way I wanted people to tell me how to fix things. When I started on, uh, on the drone on the internet, I started on the furry fandom, and I can tell you that is the last place you want to start drawing. Or doing yeah. anything. Because when the best piece of advice they give you is to chop off your hands and throw them on a river because they are more useful there than on your body, you know that you're in the wrong place. And I am not even exaggerating. I'm turning it down. They told me worse things. Uh, so I am treating you the way I wanted to be treated back when I started. Hmm, okay. Yeah, as I was mentioning, yeah, you know, the, you don't really take... The viewer doesn't have to uh, invest any kind of effort into watching the art. Yeah. With music, you just can't just let it play, just lay down and just enjoy the music. Animation takes forever. And then when the viewer just says like two or three minutes and just watching it and it's awesome. Tell to pick up. That, that, that's... Yeah, that is also su- that is also super frustrating because he himself has said more than once. And then these people come at me and they say, "Oh, you took only seventy hours to draw that? Oh my god, that is so disappointing! I was expecting something better from you." And it's so stupidly self entitled BS. Yeah. Like, oh god, when they go to when they go to friendship is magic and they are like, "Oh my god, this episode makes no sense. It's terrible. Zero out of ten, worst episode ever." And I am like, guys, you have any idea the work and careful planning that goes into making an episode of this show? You, unappreciative... That's not a word! So, yeah, I mean, you have to be an artist to understand that. And to be honest, you have to be an artist to be able to give positive criticism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, so when it comes to doing the art, 
It takes time, but the viewer doesn't require effort to actually enjoy it, save for writing. Because you actually, the, you have, the, the reader has to actually spend minutes, probably hours in my story, because the lower set is almost 300 pages long. So it's, it's annoying. And then you have to spend that, and you actually have to, they have to read for hours and actually, to actually see if, if it's good or not. And then there is a universal thing when it comes to, to all sorts of art. It get, I get the impression, may, may, maybe I'm wrong, but when it comes to art, people are more willing to give it a chance in the long run, the more show accurate the drawing is. Yeah, so, look at Gen Animations, look at Twixie Genius, look at Flufflepuff. That is true. Yeah, and also it's annoying because I have, I have a small problem with people who use puppets, vectors, and all that. I'm not saying they're not, they don't deserve respect. I have seen you doing vectoring. Vectoring is a pain in the ass. Vectoring and takes I, a lot of time. And I'm, and, you're to, and I'm talking considering I'm a person who studied and learned all Norse for the sake of writing a fanfic. I <laughs> wouldn't have the patience to vector a story, a vector a fig or something. But the only downside I have with vectoring is that there is no signature. I mean, there is no way you can recognize the work of an artist with vector because they are so accurate. They, there is no way you can say, oh, this is from this guy. Hmm. Do you know what? I'm going to dis- I'm going to uh, excuse me if I interrupt you, but I'm going to disagree with you because many artists they yeah they will do show accurate stuff, but you can still tell the difference between uh, one vector to another. I maybe I'm because I'm not I Perhaps- or have glasses, but I don't really okay. Pixel kit is actually looks, but yeah. most of the time I mean they use. You know what? It's not, it has nothing to do with the fact that you use glasses. Is that your uh, uh, your eye is not trying to recognize them? Probably, yeah. I will I will tell you that right, right right away. It will be unfair to tell you that. Oh, you cannot recognize recognize them because you have glasses. I, piece off. <laughs> That's so stupid to say. No, is that uh, for example, Pixel Kitty is very um uh, very keen to make that over exaggerated facial expressions with the uh, one eye is bigger than the other, and uh, they have the the oversaturated colors, you can tell in the way that she draws the muscles and the mouths. Uh, then uh, Twixie Genius, the one thing that she has is that uh, yeah. uh, she makes the necks really short and the heads slightly bigger than the usual. And uh, it, with uh, with Flufflepuff, you can tell right away because uh, not only the animation is... Uh, choppy and kind of like frame by not frame by frame, but it's almost like steel by steel. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, th- th- there are some quirks here and there that allow you to recognize each one of the different styles, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. with vectoring. Even with vectoring. Yeah, I can understand that. I probably try to pay attention more to those details to see if, uh, to see for myself. It's just I cannot I cannot help it. I've be, I am the kind of guy who spends five minutes looking at a picture, trying to digest it, and then moving to the next one. So uh, that means the draw friends, uh, the daily draw friends, is uh, quite a hassle for you, eh, James? Dude, I had to stop watching those. I literally <laughs> could waste like like three hours checking the draw friend carefully. When I when I started in the fandom, I was the kind of guy who'd leave the, the super long comments saying something about it. It's one of the pieces. Until one day, I, I sat down and said, "What am I doing with my life? I should be drawing something." So I stopped. I stopped checking the draw friends. Like I, I follow a lot of people on DeviantArt and Tumblr, so I can still see their stuff. But yeah. ooh, <laughs> but I so much. Yeah, I think that. But the greatest problem I have is how uh, writing is de- is dealt in the fandom. I mean, we have fan fiction, and fan fiction is one of the best places I've considered because it's uh, you can have your your writing there. And mm-hmm. uh, the problem is when you try to feature it, mm-hmm. and I have to understand, and I understand that uh, the guys who actually the producers and all that actually have to deal with hundreds of fanfics. But they, I don't really understand the fact that they they have to use something to just trim through the fan the hundreds of fanfics. And the thing is they do is focus on the mechanical aspects. 
instead of on the story itself. Which is understandable, but leads to some hilarious uh, circumstances. <laughs> For example, I'll give an example, a personal example, if, I, if it's okay with that. Okay. Yeah. All right. It happened three or four weeks ago. Uh, I submitted the Lover's Era to a group that it's about giving shout-outs to stories. And I got it rejected for two things. Uh, because there was telliness in the story, which is like, uh, I don't see a problem with that, but okay, I've seen. And then they said, the character is very info dumpy when he speaks. And I uh, let me check that out. And I actually tried to uh, appeal because, okay, I have a few things to say about that. Because Drakkar, the main character of the Lovers Era, is a few things. Uh, he's, um, I said, I want to have this thing, this, his, his dialogues represent three things. One, he's a patriotic character, so he's in love with his, with his homeland in Scandinavia. Second, he's nostalgic because he's out. Uh, he, he's out on a mission, and he misses his home. Yeah, he's homesick. Yeah. And third, and most important, Drakkar is a scald. What is which that? Which means he's a bard. Ah, uh, uh, of course. And for those of you who don't know, bards are... They, 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 yeah, they are the kind of guys that have a, a, a guitar under their arm ready to start singing about their feats and their uh, their, their victories. Yeah. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's a bit of a stereotype, but it works. So I was thinking that, so you are, take your, throwing my story away because a bard is verbose. So, but the, the, that's the whole point of being a bard. A bard is verbose by, the, by default. It's by their default. profession. That's Reasons and all that is like, well, you can actually, uh, you can actually uh, keep the story. You can actually keep it like that, but you won't get featured. And oh. I'm like, wait, what? The character is a bard. Bard Harbor bows. Removing a, the, you're taking their essence. It's like removing. That's not a word. Jokes from a stand-up comedian. <laughs> it's, you know what? I think that problem is the whole a uh, 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 cultural thing. Because yeah, I, had you had you submitted that, I'm going to be completely, absolutely patriotic here right now, but if you had submitted that to a Spanish website, I'm pretty sure they had approved it, <laughs> because we have the whole Bard thing much closer to us than other cultures. Like, I'm pretty sure that Bards are, are not all that popular in America. They are a lot more, a lot more popular in Europe. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's not like the character is just giving too many details about his homeland and all that. Well, Fluttershy is asking him. And he's all very eager about that. He's like saying, "Oh, but well, we have the 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 middle at uh, the inn with this guy who is a bit of a cranky, and he doesn't want he doesn't give anything for free. But if you have enough money, you he'll keep your mouth filled for the whole night." Uh, also, according to Talibani on the chat. Uh, they're saying, I've never seen verbosity be used as a criteria for judging any story. <laughs> One of the things, and it's hilarious to mention, is that most of the things they are using to take story down, to take stories down, are stuff that you see in published works. Hmm. And people love them. For example, there is a lot of telliness in the Harry Potter books, especially in dialogues. Um, in Lord of the Rings, that the story is amazing. The writing is horrible. <laughs> the story is amazing, but the writing is really, 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 really purple prose with a lot of needless passages about things that really don't have any weight on the story whatsoever. I don't know how many times we are going to get murdered over saying this, but... What you said, Pedro, is absolutely true. The writing of Lord of the Rings is not exactly award-worthy, to be honest. Yeah, you, you, have you seen the pacing of that story? You have the part when we are in Helm's Deep in the fight, everything on, all super fast, all super amazing. And then we sh suddenly shift to Smeagol guiding Sam and Frodo through, slowly through the plains to get to Mordor. And it's like, huh? It's just... It, ah. And then an epi a twenty page a twenty pages long epilogue about absolutely nothing, because okay everything is over. I don't really care about Sam's 
daughter resembling her his mother. <laughs> also, don't you remember? Oh, you know what? That's not something that Tolkien is also uh, guilty for. Lovecraft does this all the time. Uh, and yeah. I, I, I know, I know, Pedro, you are a massive fan of Lovecraft. So just for fairness' sake, let's just oh, talk about that passage in the Mountains of Madness where Lovecraft says it's a very cold day, and he takes like seventeen pages to say that. <laughs> oh, like, okay, yeah. not that, not that many pages, like two or three pages. But he is just saying it was a cold day in Antarctica. Oh, and you remember that part in George of uh, Game of Thrones where he spends two pages just describing a table with all the food in the table. I couldn't get through the first chapter of Game of Thrones. <laughs> I think I literally uh, couldn't. I couldn't. I tried. The I think that could happen to Lord of the Rings was the Peter Jackson movie. Though screw Peter Jackson for not putting Tom Bombadil there. <laughs> Please, you know that Tom... Oh, God, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Moving on. Next okay, we discuss, we discuss that later, but I'm going to tell you how they combined Tom Bombadil with, uh, with Treebeard, and they made a much better character. Oh, boy. Oh, awesome. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but, but, yeah, the problem is that uh, some, most of the time you see uh, stories that are, that are given technical, as, technical aspects that are... Okay, I understand. Grammar must be impeccable. I post can happen, and sometimes we'll overlook them. But I think that a good story basically allows you to ignore most lesser mechanical issues because the story basically immerses you there, and you don't actually give a damn about how how telly you are here or how info dumpy you can be here or whatever. And sometimes the out of character thing is something that annoys me because. We haven't. We have never seen. It's impossible to see on the show, and we have have we have been we have had this show for four seasons already, almost four full seasons, and we haven't seen the characters go through every possible situation ever. Yeah. So we are considered, and still uh, the reactions. We all have head cannon reactions. Of what will happen unless the show proves us otherwise? Everything is out of character. Mm. And I hate when sometimes even when trying to use for comedy's sake, out of character is frowned upon. I mm. put a, I put an example and I think you I'll you agree with me. Uh, magic duel. Magic duel, yes. The part the beginning when Twilight is juggling with the creatures and Fluttershy is like, okay, I'll agree with you. But if you dare to hurt one of them, I'll fall, I'll stop my rain, I'll rain all of pain on you. Mm. That's something that is... Blah. You know... You pull that in a fan fiction and they'll probably throw you away. Better example, better example. Simple sure. ways. Simple ways. Had simple ways been uh, submitted to a question really as a fanfic, they would have said, "Oh, you are trying to ship your OC with Rarity and then Applejack." No, not agreed. Also, Rarity is acting out of character because she's trying to be hick and she's trying to be like a farm pony. That's not, yeah, out of character. No, we don't approve it. So, sorry, Mister Josh Haver, whoever you are, but you are not going to get your fanfic appro- approved by a question really. Sorry, yeah, I was. Twitter. I once submitted on Twitter, and I know you loved it. It was a saying that it says, "If a character does something, if you write a character doing something he's never done before, it's out. It's called out of character. If it happens in the show, it's called character development." <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Is that why is this fandom so? Uh, I don't even know what this fandom is when it comes to this kind of stuff. Because come on, you don't you don't appreciate playing with the characters that they are given to you. It's yeah. like you are not allowed to get out of these boundaries. You are like, no, no, you have to stay within these these uh, uh, limits and don't get out of them. And if you get out of them, how dare you mess with one of my favorite characters? Oh, my and God. I'm going a lot to- of character moments can be the most hilarious things ever. For example, and I'm going to use one of the worst fanfics ever. In my immortal, <laughs> Oh, an out-of-character moment that is the best mo- part of the whole fanfic. Are you talking about Dumbledore? Yes. What the f- That's not a word! What are you doing, you- what? That's not a word! <laughs> <laughs> and oh, that part yeah. censored by your, for your viewing pleasures. Sorry, Norman. Yeah, it's, uh. it's amazing because it's a story where 
this the, the scene is uh, there in a for, forbidden forest and is Draco Malfoy and this ebony unsufferable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, no, please don't go any further. If you want to yeah, read that's... my immortal, why would you want to put yourself through that? Don't. <laughs> it's amazing. It's what's, amazing. What's the online series, though? <laughs> yeah. But I, the main point is that there are a lot of stories that, are, that have an incredibly good uh, plot or concept, and they are not given the spotlight because the story isn't written perfectly, even better than most, uh, fan, uh, most works of literature. By God's sake, we have Aragon published. Oh, God, don't talk about that piece of... That's not a word. <laughs> so... If that I'm... is one of the worst things ever created. Oh, and if I'm, going to, if I'm banned for if I, for example, I gave, I told you you have to read that story. It's ten thousand words long, but it's and the writing is horrible, but the story is hilarious. Wait, wait, I mean, are you talking about Eragon? No, oh, okay. the the fanfic, a fanfic. I mean. Okay. The grammar, the writing is terrible, but the comedy is glorious, and the concept is marvelous. I mean, there is no way Hoity Toity gets possessed by Duke Nukem isn't the best fanfic ever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the concept is already is crazy. That and um, old, old Spice Guy goes to Equestria. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, Jesus, because... Jesus goes to Equestria is a good one, too. Oh my God, Jesus yeah, goes to the Christ. Yeah, I know that one. You have uh, Terry Crews as the old Spice guy, and then we have, I, I think it was called, uh, the other one, uh, Mustafa, Ali Mustafa? <laughs> I don't uh, know, actually. I only know Terry Crews. I didn't know there were other, all the Spice guys. Ali Mustafa, I think it was called. Well, they have <laughs> those two guys. Mustafa is the good guys. Like They call him the Black Jesus. And then we have, <laughs> Sorry. We have Terry oh, Crews that is basically going like all Terry Crews in the Old Spice and uh, ads, just destroying everything, <laughs> just creating new songs and just ravaging everything. <laughs> it's hilarious. I mean, you you just love that thing. Has anybody has anybody put Daft Mon in Equestria already? I wouldn't be. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, there are. Fanfics of everything in Equestria. I actually wanted to write a fanfic, but I I ditched the idea because I was focused on the other ones. The concept is focusing every single ex goes to Equestria thing, and then the problem is that no one returns home, <laughs> so they are all and they are just trying to destroy each other and they start a war and all that, and then oh, everything God. goes to hell. Oh, I can just imagine. <laughs> Dolan goes to, do, the Dolan that go, is going to Equestria, and it's stupidly hilarious. Oh, God. Because I get possessed by Nightmare Moon, and I am Nightmare Dolan, fear me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all... <laughs> oh, no, no, those figs, oh, my. <laughs> this oh, innocent, this oh, innocent oh, creation oh. got taken by the machine of the internet and it turned into something horrible. Yeah, oh, hey. yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> But anywho... Then there are... hey, yeah, let's move. I think we have covered this long enough. So yeah. we can move to a different... Yeah. Talking about something different, um, I hear that you have a Tumblr, um, a, a Tumblr page or a Tumblr page. What was it again? Oh, um, yeah. I have my, the, my Ask... Uh, let me check it out because I think I have to, to close. I don't remember how my Tumblr is called. <laughs> if, if, I, if I remember right, it's... Dice and dining rooms, oh, oh, right? Yes, in the comic, yes. Dice and dining rooms. It's. Uh, I was a huge fan of one. Uh, I not that much of a comic fan, but my one of my favorite comics is uh, Knights of the Dinner Table, which mm. is a parody of role tabletop role players. But like the characters are uh, extreme hardcore. Like I, you find an old man, I shoot her with my crossbow. <laughs> So I decided, okay, I think I can make a story where the a, fan, a fig where the main six play a tabletop game with their personalities and using characters and all that, going with the same similar style of humor, as much as stretching as much as the main character's personality allows, hmm. and it's working really well. And it's hilarious how the the more comics I draw, you see the huge improvement. As how I'm getting used to drawing the tablet. 
and I'm just adding new things and all that. Well, that's usually how it goes when you start drawing. Yeah, in the, the comment for now it has few viewers, and I'm actually, but I'm actually enjoying drawing it because I love drawing different expressions and Rainbow Dash, all like, oh my god, my Huffling Assassin is amazing, he has an amazing maximum dexterity and all that, I'm going to be ripped, okay, I'm going to roll my body max index, oh my god, natural 20, she's going to be a bodybuilder, sort of super powerful, okay, now let's see, uh, there are different colors here, let's see. Uh, okay, it says here that if the number is in orange, it's overweight. If it's red, the character is obese. <laughs> My apple is obese. I'm ruined. <laughs> and Applejack is like, yo, do not complain. You just have to stop eating hay burgers. My female drawing has a beard. And if I try to shave, my young boss will lynch me. <laughs> For those of you who didn't understand any of that, amongst those I count myself, you will have to switch on your translator from normal to nerd. <laughs> uh, you say in D and D, no, but uh, uh, Pedro's um, Tumblr is a pony playing D and D kind of deal, and you guys should go check it out because if you like the D and Ds, uh, this would be interesting. This would be interesting. I will tell you one thing, even if you don't like D&D, go check it out, because the comedy is very spot on and is really good, so give it a watch. Mm -hmm. even, if, even if the idea of picturing an obese Rainbow Dash with a false knife trying to stop things, <laughs> it's a little hiking, I don't know. Uh, I this just... makes something really hilarious to me, I don't know, because I don't know why five people are hilarious. And I am a huge friend, <laughs> I'm so but anyway... <laughs> Well, I just can't wait to see um, Twilight's um, role because what did you explain to me how Twilight is? Yeah, Twilight is heavily inspired in Brian Van Hoos, one of the characters in Night of the Dinner Table. And she's a power player. So in the third strip, everyone is introducing their characters like, oh, I'm going to be an, an halfling assassin. I'm going to keep brain death of my enemies. On Rainbow, Abolier is like, oh, I'm going for the something basic. I'm going to roll with a bar with a dwarven fighter. Rarity is like, I'm going to allow them to play whatever they want. So I'm going to take care of the healing. So I'm going to roll the cleric. And then you have uh, Pinkie Pie so excited. Oh, I'm going to be a human. I'm going to play this game for the first time. It's amazing. And then you have Twilight. Okay, I'm going to uh, to go with the wizard here as a mage. If I go, uh, if I roll an elf, I have extra bonus to this skill. If I match this stat, I have able to do. And you hit the huge block of text with all the advantages and all the numbers and all that. <laughs> so basically, she's like the guy who is explaining to stuff to Leroy Jenkins, then. <laughs> Something like that, yes, because that's most of the mechanical aspect, all, all the numbers and all the maximums and all that is hilarious. Don't say that name three times, but because it's like Beetlejuice. If you say it again, it will, you will summon him. Oh, all right, we can do that. Or we summon sketchy sounds to play that song. <laughs> sketchy sounds, sketchy sounds, sketchy sounds. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, Simon, the, I, I can't wait to see your further progress with the Tumblr page because it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I, as I said, I'm really looking forward to just being able to give back all I've received after being a fan of a lot of people for years. So I've been making a lot of fan art, between alternating fan art and, uh, and drawing the comic and now juggling with the writing as well. But... I'm going to do my best. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not getting used to it, and I'm drawing faster by every time. So it takes less time. So I think I have, maybe in a couple of days, I'm going to start having a new update or something. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, I just can't... <laughs> the rush. Oh, no. Um, but anywho, uh, I can't wait to read. And your fix, I just can't wait. You, you're doing a lot, man. Like, you're doing... Tumblr comics and you're also doing writing. Where do you find the time to eat and sleep? Well, I eat and I sleep and do and actually do some run errands at home. The studying is totally different matter, but that's just me procrastinating. <laughs> I know I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't. I tell myself every day, you shouldn't not be studying, but I keep not studying. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh boy, I, I'm taking over the conversation. James, you got anything to ask? Not really. Oh yeah, you, you know him too well then. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I guess that's about it, right, Pedro? You do the fanfics, you do the Tumblr comics, and if I'm not mistaken, you also do the... If I'm not mistaken, you also do the DeviantArts, right? Oh, well, yes. I submit the comics and the fan arts to DeviantArts, but that's... Uh, you can also see them on my mod blog, the Gear That Own. Ah. There is anecdote, that one. Mm. But that, that will be for another time. Ah, sure. You can share that when we have you on later, and you can explain about your pretty interesting OC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's actually, when I started in the fandom, I was a writer and a reviewer back in Ponychan, back oh. when things were at that moment. And I usually had the running gag that my character, my OC, had a sentient talking beard, <laughs> whose name was Beard. And both of us, the beard and I actually pointed out the mistakes so you should mention, you should check on a fan pick and all that. And some of them actually went to the and I'm proud of that. So I actually decided that any each of each every time my character will be drawn, the beard will become huge and have a face and like hello and like, <laughs> uh, boy, this is gonna be fun. Hello Celestia <laughs> uh, We need to get the beard on sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, thanks, um, Simon, for coming on and talking with us. It's it's much fun having you on. Oh, it has been a pleasure being here with you too as well. Cool, cool. So anyway, where can they find you online, man? Uh, well, you can find me mostly in film fiction, which I am Simon O'Sullivan. Uh, they have uh, the... On Tumblr, you have the bearded pony Tumblr.com and dice and dining with Tumblr.com. I'm not getting a lot of tasks, but I have an, a lot of stuff planned, so I don't really need too much as for now, and I have stuff planned in case you need it. I have a Twitter that I seldom use anymore, <laughs> okay. but it's there if you want to throw something at me, I, I'll get an email. I think it's Siren Fleur, maybe? Well, yes. Maybe, I'm not sure. Just give it to me and I'll link it in the show notes. Sure. All righty then. So, anywho, thank you, Simon. And uh, I, I guess we can move on to the next topic. And the next topic okay. is shout outs. So, my first shout out goes to you, Simon. Thank you for coming on and thank you for being an awesome guest, man. Oh, uh, you, you all have been awesome. You have been awesome. You have been awesome. Everyone here has been awesome. <laughs> bees, <laughs> bees everywhere. Bees. I'm sorry. That's the only thing I can remember. Where the hell did that came from? God damn it, Oprah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, it's just Oprah. And to you, James, thank you for being here and... Um, <laughs> and Putting and you in so much trouble when it comes to editing this because, oh my God, have we swear. Oh, yeah. and, and Oh, God, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and Rommel wants an encore. Yay, we should start this all from the beginning. <laughs> uh, and to your audience on the live stream, you've been fun. <laughs> uh, and James, what about you? Shout out. Well, I want to give a shout out to Pedro for being such a cool guy, uh, coming on the show, uh, uh, being a much better behaved person than me because he barely didn't swear at all. <laughs> <laughs> which is just something that is a problem with me. I cannot help it. I have a problem. Uh, I want to give a shout out to you, Norman, for letting me stay here, not kicking me at the door. Please, it's cold outside. I don't want to go out. Um, I want to give a shout out to all the people on my stream because you guys are wonderful. Keep me going. And to the ones that send us emails, uh, which is rather surprising. I didn't expect that you guys were going to send us emails. But yeah, please keep on, keep on coming. And, of course, let's not forget all those of you who follow Movies Late and uh, uh, like, reblog, share the, the post that I uh, upload every Friday. Thank you for that. And, um, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, yeah. That's, all the, that's all the shout-outs I want to give. I want to give. Okay, okay, okay. And, Simon, what about you? Well, I want to give my first shout-out goes to Norman Sanso here, the owner of the NBS show, for having me here, which is something I actually never expected to happen. I'm getting interviewed! I don't even know if I decide that. Uh, 
also goes for James for being an awesome, long-lasting friend. We have been there forever. <laughs> Thank you. And I, hope I love you too. Even longer. <laughs> And most, and also all the guys, the people here on the stream, just bearing with all my nonsense here. Mm -hmm. um, oh, don't be so hard on yourself. I try not to. And also the people on the right group on film fiction, the writing and review and Institute of Technical Excellence. <laughs> we are the guys out there who actually help a lot of people who come to us trying to fish their film fiction to make them slightly better, but as better as they can. And we still find horrible things, but we try to do our best to make them bearable, at least. Yay. Well, uh, I'll put that all into the show notes, if I can remember them. <laughs> awesome. And anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions, suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mvshowgmail.com. And if you'd like to contact us personally, we have the emails. It's in the show notes. Go look at it. And you can also reach us on Twitter. Sweetiebot is at the MBS show. She'll tweet about editing the show, complaining at James for cursing a lot, and, um. <laughs> and other stuff. And me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. I tweet pictures about toys, food, and kitty cats. Yay. And James, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on the bunker because I'm <laughs> hiding from the comments that I made before. Uh, no. <laughs> they can find me on uh, James Lower Cork on Twitter. They can find me on DeviantArt on JamesCork.DeviantArt.com, and you can check my Ask Pony Tumblr on AskMoviesLate.Tumblr.com. Here you go, folks. Ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I dare you. I dare you. I double dare you. That's not a word. City <laughs> uh, Boy is going to be in the front lines. Mm. Yeah. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. Now links. with Facebook. Uh, <laughs> links will be provided in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been James Cork. And I have been Simon O'Sullivan. We'll see you next week, people. And I hope you're not confused with our names. Woo! <laughs> okay. Have a good one, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Oh. Adiós. If it's groovy looking far, then you can't do the right place. A TV, ah, can't you see? Classical's not the top for me. Now don't you look the other way? Because this music's here to stay. Now what that green light on your face. So all the gone when you step into this place. So put down that shovel when you grab the bass. Cause we're swinging here tonight This ain't no fancy music place You just gotta let it go From everything that tells you no Even if this is not your type of show Your type of show Maybe you've learned a thing or two About how fast these moves can groove now come on, just take a chance These beats will put you in a trance Now these things you can't forget You would only bring regret But there's one thing you must know We can't stop this crowd from stopping on the floor So put down that shovel and go grab the bass Cause we're swinging here tonight This ain't no fancy music place You just gotta let it go From everything that tells you no Even if this is not your type of show Your type of show
Cause we're swinging in the night This ain't no fancy music place You just gotta let it go From everything that tells you no Even if this is not your type of show Your type of show Just let it go You know uh, Norman, you should say Simon because Simon sounds like a, the feminine equivalent of Simon. No, so no. please, for the love of God, say no. Simon. I'm Don't gonna, say Simon. I'm just going to rotate it to three names, man. I'm going to rotate it to three names and this and get it confused. You know, this, this is, is going to be a disaster. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope people catch me and um, call me on that because this is going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be very fun when they set your house on fire with a Molotov <laughs> cocktail. <laughs> I hope not. But anywho, three, two, huh? one. I-, I guess there's Netflix and whatever services out there, so yay. There's also piracy. No, not really. <laughs> Guys, don't do that. Buy the DVDs, buy the Blu-rays. They are on Amazon. They're available. And they are not that expensive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Show your support. Don't be a pirate. Yarr. We uh, we do not endorse piracy in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. But we are not saying that you shouldn't do it anyway. <laughs> anyway, James, you're gonna get us in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, those poor producers—they are so they are so poor and like penniless. <laughs> they 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 will have to sell one of their three houses in Beverly Hills in order to pay the month the monthly bills. Oh my God, I feel so sorry for them. Not 